me for another episode of the live coding. I'm here with uh, you're here with Matt Groves. I'm your host. Thanks for joining me. Appreciate you stopping by. This is the uh, 16th episode since I started doing this officially, and today we're going to do a little bit of uh, con- contribution to an open source project uh, called Hangfire. Actually, a a um, extension to that open source project. So I think we're going to do a, a, a pull request. We'll, we'll see how it goes. And after that, we'll get back into uh, the EF Core provider that I'm working on for Couchbase. All right. As always, the Twitch bot is on, recording your chat messages to a Couchbase bucket for us to query or do something later with. We're not sure yet. But anything you type will end up in the database for us to use in the future for something that I haven't defined yet. Uh, microphone is on today. I'm, I'm seeing the color go bouncing up and down as I talk. So yesterday I had a little, a little technical problem where I forgot to unmute the microphone for like the first 10 minutes. So sorry about that yesterday, but we're in good shape today. So if you can't hear me, um, then it's probably something on your end. Okay. This is the motto of the channel here. The only stupid question is the one you don't ask. So anything you see on the screen, doesn't matter how simple you think it is, anything you want to talk about in terms of coding, programming, databases, uh, whatever you want. Ask away. Uh, I, I'm not going to tell you it's a stupid question. I'm not going to make make fun of you or put you on the spot. Uh, I want this to be a welcoming channel to questions for newbies and oldies alike. So whoever, whatever question you want to ask, go right ahead, and I am happy to talk about it. Go off on tangents, whatever. All right, uh, let me give a shout-out to my live coding team here on Twitch, the... Uh, oh, I've got some stuff popping up here. Give me one second here. I thought I turned everything off, but I guess I didn't. Okay, shout out to my live coding team on Twitch. Team Live Coders. And I'll just bring up the page here. You can see that we're all part of the same team. And you can see people who are streaming on this team right now. we got Dev Chatter, uh, who's, uh, who's streaming. That's uh, Brandonius, Brandonius' channel. Very cool channel. Check him out. He's been doing this a, a while, so definitely check out Dev Chatter. And some of the ones, Code Rush, and I don't think I've seen, I may have seen Code Rush before. I've not seen this one. Tyler Leonhart, not been to his channel yet. But lots of other people here streaming, doing some cool stuff with coding or tech or, you know, building something tech-related. Definitely uh, check these out. And it's Twitch slash team slash live coders. And what, if uh, Brandonius is, or DevChat is still streaming, we might uh, do a raid of him uh, later today. So we'll see. I think he's rated me before this time of day, so he may have started before me, but we'll see how it goes. If he's still around, we will uh, rate him or somebody else. All right, uh, what else? Awesome developer streaming list. This is a just sort of a text file here on GitHub of other people who are streaming uh, on Twitch or other places, YouTube, Mixer, Periscope, Facebook, whatever, and all the different stuff they're streaming about in general. So this was updated nine days ago, so I'm not going to go through it and uh, search for uh, new uh, streamers yet, but you can just do a control F here and you can search for something like, oh, I want to find someone who's streaming about design patterns. Well, there's uh, Steve Smith or Dallas. It's a great place to go to learn about design patterns. Uh, Ted Young also does design patterns. So two good streamers to check out if you're interested in design patterns, but control F to find whatever else, game developing, C sharp, JavaScript, Lua, Python, whatever, someone's bound to be streaming about it. That's github slash bnb slash awesome developer streams. And yours truly is on here as well. I mostly talk about databases, specifically Couchbase, but SQL, NoSQL, and a lot of backend stuff, .NET, C sharp, web development, etc. And I veer into some of these other things every once in a while. Okay. What else we got? Yes, all my videos, as uh, I finish streaming them, they get saved to Twitch for some number of days, like 30 days, I think. But I also export them to YouTube so you can watch them in perpetuity. And you can watch those videos along with any other videos that I've uh, uploaded. Bitly slash GrovesTube. Check out previous episodes. Also, whenever I do a highlight clip from an episode, I will uh, also export that to YouTube. So you can see old highlight clips there. If you don't want to sit down and watch a whole stream, you can just watch a little bit of highlight clips from them. So bit.ly slash GrovesTube. Also at the bottom of the, over here, bottom of the page here, you can see I've got uh, the links there. Okay. TwitchBot. TwitchBot is running. 
So as soon as someone shows up and starts chatting, those messages will be written here with the little Twitch bot into a Couchbase server. And this is all running on my local machine. All right, what else? Uh, break screen, yes. So I've I added something new to my streaming setup here. This is just a minor thing. Oh, I'm seeing the 10% drop frames again. Okay, well... So it's funny, last, last time, this, hap this was happening on Tuesday, I took a break and I told my kids, hey, I need you to stop, uh, stop watching YouTube because I'm streaming and there might be some bandwidth problems. Uh, and so um, I may have phrased it wrong. I said, I need you to turn off YouTube, please. I need you to turn off because I'm streaming. And uh, so they decided, okay, we'll turn off YouTube, but we'll turn on some other streaming channel. They turn on like Disney or something. So that was funny. But uh, I, I told them, uh, going in today, the Trump streaming because I was having problems, and um, also let my wife know as well. She's home today, so I'm just going to double check with them that they are doing that, and maybe there's some other problem going on. But uh, hopefully, it won't be as bad as it was Tuesday. It was up to like 14 to 16 percent drop frames, so I apologize for that. But uh, I'm doing doing what I can. And uh, we'll see how it goes today. All right. So speaking of taking a break to go talk to my kids, uh, I created the screen on. Uh, oh, that was my wife probably texted me back. Um, okay. Uh, so I created the screen to when I go on break. I just want people to know that I stepped away from the camera for a minute or two. Hey, there's Coral. Thanks for dropping in, Coral, with your big smiling face. Thank you for being here. Uh, but anyway, uh, I, uh, I created a take a break screen. Let's, so I'm just going to try this to see if it works. And uh, you should be able to still hear me. I switched over to the screen here. I don't know if uh, you've seen this before. Oops. I didn't realize we'd be playing music. Um. <laughs> yes. So... Go back here. So I thought I would have some control over the music, um, but it doesn't look like I have that in Streamlabs. Like, I don't see the channels. Let me just try this one more time. Let's see. Hmm, huh, okay. So I'll have to figure that out. I didn't actually try it uh, live. Uh, yeah, it is a bit of a throwback. So that's... that's uh, um, if you've not seen that before, back when they had Saturday morning cartoons on broadcast television, uh, ABC, I believe, had, had the little interstitials that would be little claim, claymation animations uh, that would say, hey, we're going to commercial, we'll be right back. And those, for whatever reason, they just uh, stuck, in my, stuck in my mind. And, uh, and that one in particular, where they have the, like, the trio there, and they're like, after these messages, we'll be right back. So I just had a little bit of a graphic there to uh, to show that, and I also was experimenting with like dropping in an embedded SoundCloud, uh, just playing some music while while I'm away, so people know that hey, uh, Matt's away from the camera for a minute or two, and I can just hang out here and listen to some music until he comes back. That's the idea. Because before what I was doing is I was just opening a notepad and writing. I'll be right back on the screen. So that was a little more fun to do that. So I don't know if I'm going to take a break today, but uh, that's the idea there. All right, what else we got? Okay, down to business today. So there is a .NET library. I'll just bring this up here on the screen, do a little intro. It's called Hangfire, hangfire.io. And this is a library that allows you to fire off background task, tasks in .NET and .NET Core. And the thing I like about Hangfire, there's a couple things, but one of them is that... If you don't have to create a separate service to run those background tasks if you don't want to. Uh, so if you have an ASP.NET application, you want to run some background tasks, you can run them right there in the ASP.NET application. You don't have to uh, create a separate daemon or process. It'll run right there in, in the same, uh, the same. I don't I want to use the word, right words here. <laughs> um, I don't know if it's because there's always process and thread and domain and things like that. So I'm just going to use the word process. That might technically not, not be right, but they run in the same, um, yeah, right here, no separate process. They run in the same process as your .NET application. So if you have a small ASP.NET web application and you want to run something in the background, you can just install Hangfire and start uh, just start uh, kicking off jobs. You don't have to do anything special with it. You don't have to implement a particular interface. 
It's actually very simple to fire off those jobs. And I'm, I'm actually got some presentations coming up this summer at conferences uh, to show how to use Hangfire. The other thing I like about Hangfire is that when you use Hangfire, you, uh, I think it's required, yes, right here, it uses persistent storage, which, you know, you don't necessarily always need persistent storage for background processing, but this does allow you to do a number of things. It allows you to uh, keep track of uh, jobs as they retry, to, um, to uh, monitor uh, the history of your jobs that you've run, and also uh, it allows you to uh, do some scaling. So if you ha just end up having multiple processes, maybe you're deploying your web application behind a load balancer uh, or something along those lines. Uh, as long as you're pointing Hangfire to the same persistent store, it's gonna spread out that load amongst all the different um, all the different servers, all the different nodes you've configured it for. Which means you can also, if you wanted to, create a separate process just to do Hangfire processing. So if you still like having a separate process for background jobs, you can do that. But the nice thing I like about Hangfire is you don't have to start with that, which makes deployment a whole lot easier. I'm still getting those drop frames, 10%. Cool, if you're, if you're paying attention, could you let me know uh, how it's going with the drop frames? How is it, is it buffering or is it, uh, am I sort of freezing? Let me know how it's looking out there. So I keep getting these warning messages and I'm not sure why it's acting up this week. Uh, so anyway, uh, Hangfire is very cool. And by default, I think it comes with like SQL Server connectivity, um, which, is, which is nice. If you're already using SQL Server, you can just throw some Hangfire stuff in there. Uh, so I'm not noticing much, but I'm also working more than I'm watching. Fair enough. Uh, if you notice anything egregious, just, uh, just let me know. Uh, Streamlabs is giving me a warning, but I'm not sure what 10% means. I mean, I've gotten a lot worse numbers before, like 30% or 40% drop frames. So anyway, back to Hangfire. The other cool thing about Hangfire is that it's extensible. So if I wanted to plug it into other persistence uh, methods, I could do that. So I could store my jobs in not just SQL Server, but I could also put it in MySQL or Postgres or um, whatever else. I don't, I don't know all the different um, uh, components that are available out there. But here's another, uh, here's, a, here's a set of bullet points why I like, this is what, a lot of the reasons I like Hangfire, I just cover these. Um, so, but for the way I found about Hangfire actually was sort of a backwards way. So I am a uh, developer advocate for Couchbase. So I tend to try to monitor the community out there around Couchbase and the different projects people are using Couchbase or things they're building to integrate with Couchbase. So I'm always checking for those things. And I just kind of stumbled across this uh, project uh, called hangfire.couchbase, which is basically what I just described. It's a component that you can use to wire up hangfire to use Couchbase as a persistent store. And I, you know, I'm obviously very biased, but I think this is a perfect fit. When, when you look at the, some of these uh, bullet points for hangfire, you know, that's distributed, uh, that it is efficient, um, that it's open source. A lot of those things go hand in hand with something like Couchbase. It's a memory first database, it's distributed. So uh, if you're scaling up a application with a lot of background processing and you want to distribute that amongst your, uh, all your workers, uh, you can also distribute your data amongst a bunch of distributed data nodes. So I think it, it fits uh, quite nicely. They, they, go, they, they go together very well. Uh, now, obviously not every web application um, is necessarily worth bringing in a, a full distributed data platform just for background processing. But there's lots of other stuff that Couchbase can do, caching and session store, and even the, even the you know, system of record in some cases, user profiles and so on. So this is just one more reason, one more cherry on top of uh, the Couchbase Sunday. Um, so, but anyway, uh, I have done some very, very tiny contributions to this Hangfire Couchbase project. A lot of the, uh, so I'm probably on this contributor list, in fact, but most of the work is done by this guy, uh, Im, Imran Maman, Im, Imran Maman, and he's created this uh, library. Clearly, he's using Hangfire in, in some capacity and, and working with Couchbase, so he built this, and uh, so I, I found it just on a random, I don't know, it was a Google alert or something that came up, or someone mentioned it to me on Twitter, I don't know. Uh, so I decided to check it out and try it out. I thought it was really cool. I loved it. So I started using it a lot. 
because I've you know I've used other stuff for background processing in the past. I've used like uh, quartz once upon a time. Um, what else have I used? Um, I think some just like custom Windows services running as uh, running a, as a service uh, or like console apps that were sort of pretending to run as a service. I've also used queuing to kind of send messages to a queue and then process those messages from the queue with a with a uh, Windows service sort of thing. So, um, and there's nothing wrong with those approaches. Those are those are fine. It's just I, I always feel like they have some additional um, ops work that goes with them. And those those can be headaches in some cases. So, um, you know, at a certain scale, you know, Hangfire is not going to be immune from those sort of things. But I think getting started. Uh, it's really, really super easy and some cool stuff with it that I'm not going to go into too much right now, but one of the things I like, I just got to show this to you, is, uh, let's see if I can find this on a screenshot of it somewhere. Um, it comes with a UI. Um, I wish I could get a screenshot of this. And I can probably get a screenshot of it with my, uh, so I have this app that I wrote to kind of do some dog fooding around .NET and Couchbase and even Hangfire, some other stuff. So I've been using Hangfire for, geez, it felt like six, eight months, something like that. So let me bring up the Hangfire dashboard here on that app. This is not something I built myself. This comes out of the box with Hangfire. And so it shows you a dashboard of, okay, here's the, here's the jobs as they're running in real time. Here's a, here's a graph of the, of the history of it. And I can see how many servers are running in my Hangfire that are running against my Hangfire uh, data right now. It's just one, just my desktop computer. And you can see here's all the jobs that I've set up to be recurring jobs in Hangfire. I've got five of them. Um, taking a second here to load them up for some reason. Yeah, so that five jobs here, I can see when they were last executed, when they're going to run next. You know, the, sort of the cron string. It uses standard cron to do the scheduling. What the name of them are. Uh, I can also see, if I click on jobs here, I can get a history of ones that have run in the past, ones that have failed, uh, ones that are currently in the process of retrying, uh, jobs that I've deleted. Uh, I can go to these recurring jobs, and one is one just kicked off as we were talking. But I can also manually kick these jobs off if I want to right here from the UI. Um, I don't have to worry about discovering any sort of command line uh, syntax for that or messing anything up. Because all I do is, and why is this going so slow? All I do is just check one of these or multiple one of these and hit the trigger now, and it's going to run them for me out of band, right? It's still going to run them uh, when they're scheduled to, right? So I've got like a couple jobs that go and hit Azure to do some photo processing to see if they can detect faces or they can detect uh, information about the photo using um, Azure, Azure Cognitive Services. And those are rate limited for me. They're free, but they're rate limited. So I have a job to just do like a, a handful of those every day. So I don't exceed that rate limit in one day. And then, um, you know, I'm stuck the rest of the month. So anyway, that's, that's pretty cool. I like that about Hangfire. I'm using Hangfire Couchbase behind the scenes to actually store that data. So let me just uh, show you that here. Bring up my Couchbase cluster. I think I may have mentioned this briefly earlier this week or last week. But I've got a bucket here called Family Photos Hangfire. And this is a bucket that contains all the data that Hangfire is storing and using to keep track of those jobs. The history of the jobs, the jobs that are currently running, jobs that have failed, etc. And this data, uh, I, I think after a period of time, maybe I can show you here. Well, that one doesn't. Um, but some of this data is scheduled. It, you can actually... Um, Jack Conseprio. Hey, thanks for show, showing up, Jack. Uh, uh, so the app I just showed was a, uh, it's just my own personal app I just use for myself. It's an app to categorize and catalog all my family photos. I have a huge collection of, of family photos that I, I have stored, and I, I want to know what's in them, what are the best photos, what are the worst photos, can I delete some photos, do I have duplicates, things like that. Uh, so background processing is just a small part of that. Let me see if I can find it. Yeah, none, none of these. But in Couchbase, you can, when you create a docu document, you can say, okay, I want this document to expire at a certain period of time or after it hasn't been touched for so long. So Hangfire is also taking advantage of this because you don't need to keep a complete history forever of all the jobs that have ever run. You probably want to keep like the last week or two weeks or month or whatever. 
So that's another pretty cool feature it takes advantage of in Couchbase. So what I wanted to show today, all this to say, um, I was uh, I was testing out uh, Hangfire. I was working with my app a little bit, and I had made a mistake, and I had given uh, I had created a user in Couchbase with not enough permission, with a with a low permission level, and I tried to uh, have Hangfire use that user, and that that user was not able to create indexes in the database because I didn't give it enough permission, and uh, the error message that I got was not that it couldn't create indexes, but that the queries failed. And the queries failed, obviously, because there was no indexes. So I looked through the source code, and um, I came to this part of it right here. Uh, so this is in, in the hangfire.couchbase extension. When it gets initialized, you can see right here, we're creating these five indexes. So these are five indexes that hangfire.couchbase needs to query and store data in a Couchbase plugin. Okay? And as you can see, it's just saying manager.create primary index, manager.create index, but these all return some result that say whether or not they were successful. They don't themselves throw exceptions, but they'll return information about whether or not this operation succeeded or not. And this, this is not inside of a try catch, at least not uh, one at this level. And, and so it just bubbles up a, a, a exception to the user, which we don't want. Um, but but it's, it's fine, though. It's fine for us to bubble up an exception, but it's, it's, there's nothing being bubbled up here. It's bubbled up later as a result of problems here. So I thought, why don't I create an issue in this project, hangfire.couchbase, and point this out and say, I noticed that if I didn't give enough permission to my RBAC user, that's a role-based authentication, that the index creation fails silently. And that's the lines I was talking about here. If these fail, they just sort of fail silently. And then later Hangfire crashes because the queries it's trying to run aren't indexed. So I didn't really have a good idea of how we should proceed with that. Like, what do we, what do, we do? Do we just throw an exception here? Do we log an error message? Something else that we do? Do we retry it? So I just wanted to get uh, thoughts from the community, from, from people using Hangfire about what I should do. And so uh, Imran uh, responded almost immediately, within a few hours, and says... Well, it looks like it, the method handles the exception, which it does, and then returns with the I result. So he's suggesting that I make the change, I actually get the result, and then interrogate the result to see was it successful or not. And if it wasn't, then go and throw an exception there. And that exception is going to be more um, informative to a developer trying to get off the ground with Hangfire. So uh, I'm, he says, uh, can you... Can you make this change and check to see if this will be helpful? So that's what I'm going to do today. We're going to uh, open up Hangfire uh, and uh, edit the code a little bit. So um, I'm going to make sure that I've got the latest. And it looks like it hasn't been committed to in four months. Um, but if I bring up my folder here, my local folder, come on, Windows, let's go. Okay, so let's see, uh, zproj. Okay, let me delete this. When it says delete me, I like to delete stuff while I see it. All right, so I've got the Hangfire Couchbase, and let's just make sure that I'm in the right branch. I'm in master, that's good. So let's just make sure I have the latest version. Do a poll. I think I probably do, but just in case. I'll do a poll. Yep, already up to date. Okay, so now what I want to do is I'm going to create a branch. So this will be, uh, we'll do a git, and then I'll do uh, create branch. And what should I call this branch? I should call this, I don't know if they have any standard for branches. Uh, he's calling, so he's calling his this develop branch master. And then he's got develop.rabbitmq and develop.improvement. I'm not sure what rabbitmq has to do with anything. So I'll just call mine develop slash, I don't know, index exceptions, index creation exceptions. It's probably good enough. Okay, and then I will switch to that branch. Yep, looks good. Okay, and I th also want to make sure um, 
Yeah, I've got, okay, I've got origin, which is my fork, and I've got upstream. So actually what I probably should have done is check the upstream first. But I think I'm in good shape, because like I said, it hasn't been updated in like four months. Okay. So next, let's open up Visual Studio. And I'm not going to use my existing project, because it's uh, a little too complicated for just developing this, this one minor change. So we're going to implement it from, implement a, a very, very basic hang fire project from scratch. So let's uh, create a new project. It can just be a console project, I think. That's all I need. Yep, good enough. And we're gonna call this um, hang fire develop. I don't know, hang fire develop index feature. I'm going to probably delete this one later, uh, but that's that's fine. We'll call it that. We're not going to actually commit this project, uh, but we're, I'm going to create this project, bring in the HangFire library um, uh, as a reference to this project, and then make changes to the HangFire library. Visual Studio is over here on this side of the screen. Oh, look at that. Looks like we're logging messages okay. That's good. Ah, oh, Windows really crawling today. But on the positive, I haven't seen an error message about dropped frames in a while. So that's going well. So um, we're about half an hour in, so I just want to take a second here and, and say thanks for everyone for dropping in so far. If you have questions about what's going on, Feel free to drop those in the channel about anything you see at all. My motto here is basically, the only stupid question is the one you don't ask. So, you got a question? Ask it. Doesn't matter how trivial you think it is, how stupid you think it is, I'm telling you it's not. Uh, your question is important, so ask. Ask away. All right. Okay, so I want to bring in a dependency. Now, it's not going to be a NuGet dependency. I want to actually bring in the... Uh, the, the project that I already checked out of GitHub uh, that, I, that I copied from GitHub. So that is down here, right here. Um, oh, whoops, did the wrong thing. Huh? Projects, yeah, I want to have, what am I doing wrong here? I want to add, oh, I know, I know I'm on reference. I want to add another project to the solution. So existing project, that's what I want to add. Hangfire Couchbase, and we'll bring in Hangfire Couchbase. So that's going to add that project to my project. Okay, and so... Uh, let's go back over here to this. And you can see there's an example of how to get started with, um, with HangFire. Now it's a little, it's usually ASP.NET project and I'm hoping I can do it with a console project just fine. Um, all right, so let's just copy and paste this part and see what happens. I may have to add in Couchbase net client. Yeah, I think I do. So we'll go ahead and do that. I'm going to be careful not to get the alpha version. Uh, I don't want uh, 278. Oh, it says 261 is installed already. Hmm? Why isn't it showing up here? Okay. Um, okay, so I'll, let's just stick with 261. That Maybe that's the version that... What am I doing? I'm in the wrong place. Down here is where I want it. So it looks like, actually, we could stand to update the Couchbase.NET SDK version in HangFire. But that's sort of a different problem. Net clients and probably not a big deal. Uh, but I want to bring in was it 261 just so the versions are the same. Uh, 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm hmm. Reference that. So we had a using statement up here at the top. Thank you, Resharper. Global configuration. I'm not sure what that is. Hangfire core. Okay, interesting. So what we're doing here is this part here, this code 11, lines 11 through 26, which we don't need most of this, in fact. Um, but this is uh, basically our configuration for Couchbase. So I'm going to abbreviate this a little bit. I'm going to point it to localhost. That's the Couchbase server that I'm running. Okay, all this stuff we don't really need. All this max timeout stuff. All, I mean, that stuff is good for tuning, but I'm, I'm not really interested in, in doing that right now. And I'm also going to need to say, um, authentic, was it set authenticator? Yep. A new password authenticator just to give in my Couchbase credentials, which locally are administrator and password. Very highly secured, carefully chosen credentials. Okay, now why isn't this happy with this? Oh, because I'm going to need to add a reference to the other project. And now it should be happy with this. Um, yep, okay. And uh, I'm gonna create a new bucket. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to use the uh, the bucket that my family photos app is using. I create a separate bucket just for testing. Straighter password. Okay, and so we'll just call it uh, Hangfire Test. Minimum memory quota. That's all we need for testing. So I've got Hangfire Test. Is the bucket name? Wait, did I use casing? I did use casing. All right, so that's all set there. Now, um, so what I can do is I can actually start firing off background jobs. Um, so when, when I do this, this is actually gonna go through the initialization process. Um, in fact, let me go ahead and try to reproduce this. I'm going to create a user with um, not enough, not enough permission. Not enough permission, we'll call him. Oh, not enough permission. And we'll give him some permission on hang fire, but it will be, uh, let's just say data reader only, which is not enough permission for hang fire to function properly. Oops. So let's just leave administrator in there, but comment it out for now. So we'll do that later to test. Okay. And next thing I have to do is recurring job and we will add or update a recurring job. And so I can call it whatever I want to. Um, recurring job, Matt. And the, the really cool thing about Hangfire is that I don't have to implement any particular class or interface. I can just start writing code. So I'm going to create a method called um, Matt's background task and just call that. And that can just be a, in this case, static method. And I'm just going to have it, and hopefully this will work, but uh, hopefully it has access to console. But uh, hey, I'm in a background task. And uh, the time, I'm going to print out the time. The time is, oops, date time dot now. All right. So that should be good. What doesn't it like about this? Cannot convert type void to string. Hmm. Is it because I haven't finished it out yet? So cron expression. So there's some helpers here that Hangfire builds, builds in. Um, I can also give it any sort of uh, cron, literal cron expression that I wanted. These literally return strings. But I'm saying run this background task every minute. Okay. And then I'll say console.readline. 
um, and uh, console.write. Calvin Allen, hey, bro shizzle. What's going on, man? I haven't seen you in a while. Hope things are going good for you, man. Thanks for thanks for stopping in. Checking out a little bit of hang fire right now. Press enter to stop. All right. Okay, so what I'd expect to happen here is because I didn't give it enough permission, it's going to fail, but it's going to fail in the way that I don't want it to fail. Uh, so let's go ahead and I think I'm good to run it right now. Let's find out. Every other Tuesday is co-working day, so I generally have to skip that one. Okay. That's cool, man. I'm glad you guys are still doing the, the co-working day sort of thing. So you're actually going out some location. Calvin, uh, Calvin works at home, just like, just like I do. But uh, a lot of the team he works with is um, here in central Ohio. So um, they can get together on a regular basis. They rent an office. We have our own space. Oh, okay. So there's like an official office now here in Columbus. So I just discovered something new about uh, Hangfire that I didn't know before, is that I can't give it private methods to run in the background. So that's fine. I can just make this one public. That makes sense. Well, dude, I'm going to have to come by and visit your office sometime if you've got, uh, if you've got an actual office space. It's only, you're only using it once a week, or is someone else using it like every day? Maybe I could do a live episode from your office. I don't know. I don't know what anyone would be interested in that, but I want an excuse to come see you guys. All right, so here I'm running my application, and I, I would hope to see an exception here soon. Yes, okay, so this is exactly uh, what I expected to see. Uh, regularly scheduled twice a month. Okay, that's cool. Well, one of these days, if you, if you guys are interested, I, I wouldn't mind coming out there and hanging with you guys and maybe uh, hey, buying you a lunch or something like that. It'd be fun. Okay, so the error we're seeing here is that there's no index available on the key space Hangfire test that matches your query because Hangfire is trying to run some queries in order to set up this job and set up monitoring, things like that. However, it can't run those queries because the indexes were failed to be created. And that is where our code comes into play. So, let's go back here. This file is called couchbasestorage.cs. You know what? I'm reminded here I should get Karnak running. So I'm doing some shortcuts here. Uh, couch base storage. Let's see. Yeah, so this is in the Hangfire project. Down here, we've got these indexes created. All right. So um, these are failing because I don't have the user doesn't have enough permission. So what we can do is we can say result equals. This is the code that he kind of suggested, uh, suggested but uh, if it's not the case that result was successful, then we're going to throw result.exception, which this kind of implies that uh, it's only unsuccessful if there's an exception. That may not be the case. So we may want to think about that. But let's just, uh, let's just try this. And, and see what happens. And really, I only need to check the first one because if you can't create the first index, you definitely can't create the second index and so on. So it's going to, it's going to bail out here at some point, but I don't know, we'll, we'll think about that. All right, so let's try this again. Here's my console app. I should see a different exception. Oh, that's not what I expected to see. Not sent to an instance of an object. So I'm going to run in debug mode and see what's happening here. Result exception is null. Okay. User does not have credentials. So that's not an exception, but it is, it is success false, right? But to see there's no exception, but there are errors right there. Okay. All right. So uh, I think my intuition was right there. So if there is not success, then we have to do two things. We can check to see 
if results dot exception not equals null, then we can throw result dot exception. Otherwise, we can throw our own exception, throw new, I don't know, just exception, I guess, and make result dot errors. Wait, result dot, was it error? I thought it was errors. Well, we just put a plain string here for now, unable to create indexes. And I like to, when I create error messages, I like to, I don't always do this, but I like to give whoever's reading the error message some idea of what to do next about it. So um, make sure uh, the user has sufficient permissions. Um, I'll maybe make sure the RBAC user has sufficient permissions. All right. I could have sworn I saw an error property on that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Over here. So where, where is your office, Calvin? Is it, um, I know you guys are mostly up in the Westerville area if not all of you up in the Westerville area. So I'm guessing it's up near the Westerville area. Throw new vanilla ice exception, can't touch this. <laughs> so results, yeah, there was an error in here. Huh, so it must be, because this is, what type is this? Yeah, hmm, okay, well, off of Schrock Road between Cleveland and Route 3, seems like a good place. Uh, so, if I go to immediate here, I say result.errors, that's going to what? It's going to give me an error that I result doesn't contain a definition for errors. Okay. Interesting, if I were to say result.toString, what happens there? Okay, so maybe I just say result.toString. But, uh, yeah, so it's going to give me an exception, unable to create indexes which is exactly what I would see here. Yep, unable to create indexes. Make sure the RBAC user has sufficient permissions. So maybe, maybe what I can do is, <laughs> let's see. So either, either I leave that hard coded in there, or I can say result.toString. Hmm, okay. Let's try that, see how that works. Users don't have credentials to run index operations, add role, query manage index. Okay, so that's a pretty good error message actually. It tells you what role to add on what, um, add query manage on hang fire test. Yeah. Yeah, so it tells you what bucket and what role to give that user. So that makes a lot of sense. So that's pretty good right there. Now, the only thing I would, this is probably fine the way it is right now. The only thing is if for some reason this succeeds, but these don't, we're in trouble. Um, so I'm wondering also, I'm wondering, are we in async method? We're not. Creates, yeah, there is an async method to do these, which would probably be better to async those. Um, hmm. Create manager. So let me just, let me just do some experimentation here now, a little async stuff. So I want to say, um, so this is fine. What I want is this. Whoa. Just this part. I'm going to make this async version. And that should return a task, right? What is happening? Visual Studio. So that's return a task of something, okay, which is fine. Um, tasks equals new list of tasks. 
can I say tasks.add that okay I think I wanted something here so I'm going to comment these out as well Karnak just crashed by the way you saw it Calvin this thing is I don't know not not my friend I'm going to switch these all to async we're going to add all these to this list of tasks doesn't like this cannot convert from string to string array oh interesting interesting that the signature is different but I think that's easy enough to fix we just say like this yep okay yeah that's strange I never had issues with it yeah I don't I don't know what the deal is you know, there's there's uh, Karnax open source, and there is an issue or two out there, uh, people experiencing this. So I'm not alone, and I think I actually, at one point, I got the log files and sent them in to somebody, it was GitHub or something. Um, but I haven't got any notifications about it, so I assume that it's still an ongoing issue. All right. So I've got a list of tasks here, and now, since we're in, a, we're in a synchronous method, I want to do tasks. Dot, um, I want to wait for all these to complete, right? Wait all tasks. What doesn't like about this? Two array? That's being array. Okay, that's a little weird. So I'm going to wait for all the tasks to be completed. Uh, I don't know if this really makes much difference, but I guess what I'd be worried about here is, hmm, let me think about this. Maybe I don't want to do a task wait all. I want to do a, uh, is it parallel for each? Task in tasks. No, oh, it should be X. Right. I forget how parallel works. Okay, and then I'm gonna say x dot huh? executes a web never mind parallel. Cannot resolve. Do I have to do a task here? You know, I just saw someone do this on a stream. It was probably who was that? It might have been Codebase Alpha was doing this, and he did a really great example of it. And now I can't remember the darn syntax. Oh, was it like this? Yeah. I, I, yeah, that's like it. Okay. And we can say uh, x dot... And um, parallel for each collection. Yep, yep, I got it. And uh, so I'm, now I'm wondering if this is even is this even worth doing. Um, so how do you uh, run? I guess I could run synchronously, <laughs> uh, but that is a void. I don't know if I want to do that. I want to actually get the return value from these continue with what's x in this case so maybe it shouldn't be a list of tasks it should be a list of task i result x Dot results. Oh, maybe that's what I'm thinking of here. X dot result. Yeah. Okay. Result equals X dot result. X dot. Yeah. So this is where I put in this code right here. I can say if result dot success or if not success. Let me throw result dot exception. 
and then we throw new exception. If that doesn't work, then we throw exception result dot two string. Okay. So I don't know if the async is really, it's not really making things worse. I don't know if we're going to actually improve performance of this or not. Um, but the cool thing is here that I can sort of group them up. And if any one of them has a problem, then we throw the, we throw the exception. And we're going to have to try a couple different things with this. Because what happens if I try to create the index and it's already created? Is that also a failure? So we'll figure that out. All right. So let's try this. Again, this permission, this user doesn't have enough permission, so none of those indexes are going to be created. Um, we'll just we'll just run it, see what happens. Okay, over here, we've got one or more errors occurred. Not reference of an object. We got lots of null reference exceptions. So I may be making stuff harder than it needs to be. Set a breakpoint here inside the parallel. Okay, so result in this case, yeah, that looks good. Success is false, yeah. Wait. Oh, I'm doing this. I'm doing this so wrong. So wrong. Okay, so that all needs to be inside of this if statement. Don't you also need to await since it's async? So that's what this result is doing right here. I think this is basically me just saying, uh, give me that result synchronously. Um, I mean, you could be right, Calvin. I, uh, um, result success. Uh, so then if, if, Result dot exception not equals null, and throw it. Otherwise, we're just going to throw our own exception with the string. And I'm not in an async method. Um, aggregate exception. One or more errors occurred. Oh, interesting. So that must be the result of it being in the in the uh, parallel for each. It's, it's getting all the exceptions and aggregating them. But the thing is, I don't need to run all of them. If one of them fails, then the whole thing can fail. This is just grouping them all up. It's saying, here's five exceptions that happened in parallel. So, I don't know. Here's another thing, like task dot, uh, it's something like, you know, I don't, I don't know this well enough to, but it's, there's, I know there's a way to do this where if I have a group of tasks and if any one of them fails, then just sort of abandon them, all of them. Yeah, so the thing is with, uh, with using the a await, I'm not in an async method here. So I can't use a wait syntax in here, as far as I know. Uh, unless I can do the, unless I'm, do this, is that what you're getting at? So that, yeah, this is going to be a problem because I'm not in an async method. So yeah. I mean, this is probably more than I really need. This, this is a different way we can go about this. The parallel stuff is cool and all, but I don't really like to mess with that um, unless I really have to. So why don't we do this? We're going to run them synchronously still. We're going to run every single one of these. Well, we're just going to, instead of running them in parallel, we're going to run them serially, I guess, is the opposite of parallel. And 
and put the results into the collection. And then, if any one of those results is not successful, um, any failures equals results dot first or defaults from results where it is not successful. Okay, and then if, if there are any failures, And then we'll do this. Uh, yeah, some of this task stuff is out of my wheelhouse. I have a possible use case for it at work, but haven't done it yet. Yeah, I just, I don't, uh, it might be too big of a hammer here. I don't, I don't know if it's really necessary. It's because even, even in the best case scenario, these five statements are only ever going to run one time. Um, so there's no reason, there's no strong reason to get fancy with it. Uh, but, uh, so if there's any failures, I don't know if this is the, I want to word this or not, but if there's any failures, get the failure. And if it's not, and, uh, where you know it's not successful, so we can leave that out. And if there's an exception, throw it. Otherwise, throw a new exception with, uh, with the message. Okay. Let's try this. Okay. And so that's the message I expect to see. That users don't have credentials. Add roll and roll such and such. Okay. So I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, I'm wondering if a comment is necessary here. I mean, creating indexes and putting in results, and then, I mean, this is where I'm not so sure about the wording. This is why naming is difficult. Computers, computer science or programming, they say naming is one of the two hardest things. Is that this isn't this isn't really a boolean, but it's named like a boolean. Uh, and so. Um, it should be, are there any failures creating indexes equals, should be results.any, okay? And then uh, if that is true, did any task fail equals results.any? Yeah, that's basically what I'm doing here. Um, Mine's a little longer named, I guess. But if there if there are any failures creating indexes, then uh, get the comments. Comments are behind you, haha. Huh? Comments are behind you. What does that mean? Uh, so uh, just want to get the first failure, I guess. First failure. So I know there's going to be one, so I can just make this first. And if there's an exception, throw it. Otherwise, write it to a string. I typed my comment and sent it before you typed it, but the time it showed up, you had already pivoted. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you're saying the, the, the Twitch comments are a little bit lagged, is what you're saying. Okay. So I, I think I'm okay with this wording here. This is, you know, you know me. I, I hate using comments unless I absolutely have to. But I think this is relatively readable. If there's any failures creating indexes... Um, then what's the first failure and get it. So okay. the only thing that bothers me about this is I'm kind of iterating twice, but again, we're talking five at the most. So I think the readability is worth the trade off here. Get the first one that's not successful. Does it have an exception? If so, throw it. Otherwise take the string from it and throw that as a, um, plain exception. One thing I don't like about this still is I'm using the generic exception here. I'd much rather prefer to throw a hang fire specific exception or something more meaningful than just exception. Any suggestions there, Calvin? What kind of exceptions we got? Hmm. 
Anything in hang fire? Uh, I mean, I guess it's kind of a... Um, generally speaking, we're expecting it to be not enough permission. That's kind of the exception here. So it's almost like a security exception, kind of. But I don't. But it could be other things. Other things could go wrong. So I'm just going to leave it that for now. If I'm going to submit this pull request, bring in WebMBC and use not authorized exception. <laughs> I don't want to bring in a whole namespace, a whole dependency on MVC just for that. And and also it could be a different. It could be. I mean. I can't imagine what it is right now, but there could be other exceptions that, that occur. Um, something else goes wrong. I'm going to leave it there for now. Um, this is why a pull request is great, because I'm going to submit it to the maintainer of this library. He's going to review it and say, and either agree with me and say, yeah, that's fine, or he's going to say, I'd rather you use so-and-so exception there. Right? So it's kind of like a, a, an asynchronous code review. Let's do some more testing here. Let's just make sure this is still bombing and failing like I expected to. Okay, so that's what I expect, good. Now I'm going to give it enough permission, so it should work. Administrator password has full permissions to do everything, so no reason why it should fail. It should start printing out those messages to the console. Um, okay, so it's actually it's going to take some time to create those indexes. So that's going. That's why it's sort of not doing anything right now. Those indexes take a little bit of time to run. Uh, the very first time you spin up, uh, you spin up Hangfire. We can actually go and and check it out over here. I log in here. I look at indexes. We can see. Um, I want to just view by bucket. So here you can see the hang fire indexes are being created. This one's in process. It just went green. And what does one more need to be created? And there it is. It's in yellow. It'll switch to green here in a second. And you can see they're not indexing anything because there's literally nothing in the buckets right now to index. But it's still in a process. So once that goes green, we should see some. Yep, there we go. That live update is nice. You're saying this this back here on the uh, the uh, Couchbase UI? Yeah, it is. I tell you what, we we don't have a massive UI team at Couchbase, but who we do have on the UI team, they are, they are amazing. They have done some really really good stuff. Um, and uh, let's see, it's uh, it's Eben Eben Haber. I hope I pronounce her names right. Apologize if I don't. Eben Haber and Rob Ashcom, and I think as couple more but those are the, those are the two that I interact with the most they have done some really great stuff with the query editor and uh, the dashboards and, uh, and and they they put so much thought into the usability and I, it's just, I'm just glad they're out they're uh, working for couchbase so anyway um, I, was, I was hoping to stall long enough that uh, the background task would actually run but here's the thing since it's a background task it this console might not actually be printing to this console, if that makes sense. Um, so uh, I don't have a UI here because I'm not running it on the web. I can't, I can't bring up the UI. So I want to verify that those background tasks are running, but how would I do that? UX UI designers, developers are amazing. Yeah, I mean, you're absolutely right. Uh, all, all three of those things are amazing. These guys, um, these guys uh, are not only good at just, just UI and graphic design and stuff like that, but they are really, really smart about thinking about the user and, and, the, and the developer experience. And uh, um, they're really good at it. And I'm, I'm so glad that we have them. Um, so I guess what I could do is I could write to a file. Uh, file dot, wait, what do I want, what do I want to do? System.io, yeah, file dot append. 
append all lines to, I don't know, um, test file dot log dot txt and just got to append some string to it and connect it somehow or am I just saying the same thing that console dot write line does? Um, oh, oh, instead of console dot write line, can you pipe it to standard out? Hmm, I don't know. So I, I don't, <laughs> here's the thing, the hang fire to me it's very cool. It's a little bit magic the way it works because I'm not passing in a specific implementation that I created. I'm just passing it this expression. And Hangfire is doing some stuff to read that expression and somehow wrapping it and putting some state around it. Um, so I don't know what it does with the console. It clearly is not writing it to this, this, the same console that's in this thread. So it's some other thread. And it's maybe it's mocking out console or something. I don't know. Um, let's just uh, we'll do the same. We'll do the same things here. Hey, I'm in a background task. The time is daytime now. Okay. Now, when I run this, you'll notice that's a little faster because the index has already been created. So we should see the press enter much faster. Okay. So something else I wanted to test it, and I, I was worried about this, is that there, it's the create index is failing because the index already exists. Um, console out that right line is a variation. I see it does something differently with standard out. Okay, I might give that a try. But this is something I also didn't want to happen. So, so right now, the present state, if we go back to here, it's running these create index methods, and Anything that happens, any sort of error message that happen, it pretty much just ignores, including an error message that the index has already created, which is fine that it ignores that, but I don't want that to cause an exception to happen in this case. So what I probably also need to do is, I don't know if there's a method for this. Uh, um, basically to, to tell, does an index already exist? And if so, don't even try to, to run this in the first place. Manager dot index. I mean, I could drop it, but I don't want to drop and create it every time. Uh, list indexes. This is, I mean, this is tricky because the asynchronous nature here, another process could create indexes. So what kind of exception was it throwing? Because if, if it's a specific kind of exception, I can maybe, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can maybe test for that and just ignore that exception. If it's like a duplicate index exception or something. All right. So first failure exception. So there is no exception there. So it's just going to be first failure to string. It's got one error. Code 5000. I don't know if that's the code for duplicate or not. Hmm. Yeah, this one's tricky. This one is tricky. Because if you think about it, there could be multiple processes firing off at the same time, which may be an issue here anyway, honestly. Hmm. It might be a better approach. These are all synchronous, right? To, again, just ignore the results, but at the end, check to see if those indexes exist.
And if they don't, then throw an exception. That might be a better way to go about this. Hmm. Okay. Well, I think I will be referencing this stream for sure in my pull request, but let's uh, let's get rid of this again. What would happen in the case of multiple issues though? One index fails for reason A, another fails for, index for reason B. Yeah, yeah, right, exactly. That's kind of exactly what I'm getting at. And, and they're not returning different exceptions, they're just returning different messages. Which So I could check the message for specific wording. Not a great approach, a little hacky, especially if the message, message could change in the future. Uh, and the nature of Hangfire is that I'm going to be distributing these jobs amongst multiple applications that could all be starting up at the same time. Um, so if, for instance, I run this, uh, it may fail because the index, I don't have, I didn't have permission, but then if I check down here, it still could be created because another process had the right permission or something like that. You know, you got to think of, this is distributed computing, this is, this is threading and, and parallelization, all this stuff in, in one could be a perfect storm kind of thing. So what I want to check is basically before I proceed any further, I want to make sure that these indexes exist. Index names, new list, string. And that, that's probably a good enough check. Because yeah, like I said, if, if the index is, the whole reason is, it's, I mean, if the indexes aren't there, it's going to fail eventually anyway. It's just that this would be a, a sort of fail fast type of situation. It fails sooner, closer to the actual issue. And now the problem with this is now I've got duplicate. I'm, I'm duplicating the, this stuff here. So if I, if I come in later and I decide, oh, I need another index, well, then I've got to make sure to add it here and I've got to add it here. It's got a quarter till three already. When did I start? I started at one thirty. I thought. Man, I spent the whole session on this. MVP first, then refactor, he says. <laughs> yeah. Always, always smart. But I'm just, I'm just seeing the, a maintenance problem right now. I'm just, this is, I've been bitten by this before, this exact thing, where it's like, make sure you add it here, but also you have to add it here. And you have to know to do that. And if you don't, you're going to get another weird error message and go through this whole process again. But there's, I mean, I, I can't just use a list of strings because there's other information here. There's this defer, which is always false. In this case, it's fine. But then there's the specific field that it's indexing. Hmm. And this is, this is even different because it's a primary index that doesn't even fit in my nice neat box here. Um, 
spin out the creation of the index and then check it, check for it into a helper method. Spin out the creation of the index and then check for it into a helper method. I think I see what you're saying. Create and validate index. Basically a wrapper around around this. The primary index is, is special in this case too. <sighs> Let me just see if there's anything already in there. You can provide a single string of the name so you don't have to repeat it. Yeah, yeah. I also have to provide the fields. Uh, primary doesn't have fields though because it just goes off the key and it uses its own special name. So I'd have to create two helper functions, I think. Which may be fine. Okay. Extension method or not? What do you think? Private um, create and check primary index string index name pool defer equals oops for equals false. I love extension methods. Smiling monkey. This should be a void, I think. Um, so this was going to go in here. Index name. Oh, yeah. I think this is extension method. I think it is. Extension method on iBucket Manager. Do we have any extensions for that already? Bucket Manager extensions? Nope. Do we have any extensions? Couch based storage extensions. That's the standard method because that's how hang fire works. Okay. All right. I'm going to do bucket manager extensions. Uh, right. Bucket manager. Yep. 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 Okay. And uh, public void. Create uh, create and check. Using the word and in there makes me uncomfortable. Uh, I bucket manager. I bucket manager. It should be this. Index name defer equals false. this and this why was I doing this again index name oh yeah because I wanted to check if it exists check it if it exists which means indexes equals this dot uh, list indexes indexes dot index exists well how about does index exist does index exist equals indexes dot any index with the name equal to index name 
Should this return true or false? Because there's also this information in this result here. I could say if if not the case that the index exists, then we can go through our thing again. If result dot exception not equals null, then throw no throw result dot exception. Otherwise, throw new exception result dot uh, message. So this is only going to throw. This needs to be static too. This is only going to throw if the index doesn't exist. I don't know. That was, it doesn't quite feel right to me, but. Oops. You know what? I could also. Um, result. What does this return? Uh, I result. Well, what don't you like here? Yeah, that's fine. Um, so I guess the name is check uh, create and check nickel. Okay. Okay, so this is going to basically wrap it, create the index, try to create the index. Oh, this should this should be over, this should be defer here. Um, then get a list of all the indexes. Actually, if we're going to do this, this should probably always be false. We don't want to defer index creation if we're going to immediately check for it. Okay, get all the indexes. Make sure my index is in there. If it does not exist, then throw an exception, uh, whatever, you know, this is, this probably failed, <laughs> hopefully failed. Um, and, and then if it doesn't fail, just go ahead and return the result anyway. Not, not actually using it, but uh, return it. So this wouldn't need to false here anymore. Okay, I'll create another wrapper for Regular indexes, public, static, I result, create, and check nickel index, this, bucket manager, this, string, index name, and what is it calling this? Fields, params fields. Oh, that's an array. Okay, and it's gonna be very similar to this. Uh, let's see, then you can move lines 13 to 20 into a private validate method that they both share. Oh, yeah, I think I could probably could do that. Well, let's get through this here first. Um, result equals so-and-so, this, critical nickel index is going to be off of index name. For false param fields, and then you're saying this is just going to be exactly the same. Okay, and then private static. Uh, I don't know what check index. I don't know. No, forget this. Reason sharper. Uh, refactor, extract, extract method. Uh, local function? No, method. Return and check nickel index. Interesting. Uh, index name result. Why is it passing in result there? 
but all I'm doing it. Oh yeah, yeah, that's fine. Okay. Is that what you're getting at there, Calvin? That's that refactoring. And we can take out these deferred. Alternatively, don't let the private return anything and change it to a void and return from the individual methods. Because all the and check is doing is either returning the result or throwing an exception. So it's almost like an assert. Uh, oh, but I use the result. Um, in there to throw the exception. So I do. I still need the result in there for that. So it doesn't really need to return it, though. I think maybe that's what you're getting at. Just passing it in. No need to return it. could have this return result. That really looks like much more of a wrapper here. Get the result, check it, and return the result. Oh, well, this needs to be my result. Okay, so let's go back to this, our, our user with not enough permission. I'm going to reset. Get rid of some of these indexes. You know, probably easier just to get rid of the bucket. Hang fire test. That'll get rid of the indexes for me. One fell swoop. Calvin, I think you are probably taking the lead in uh, in Twitch chat, by the way. Let's go and uh, take a look here. I think I got rid of my query. So what I want is uh, t dot display name. Group by t dot display name order by count sending. Yep, look at that. Oh, well, you're already in first, I think, but you're like four times as many messages as Coral. You are running away with it. I, I, you don't get any prizes or anything for, for this, but uh, there you go. You are owning that leaderboard, that the meaningless leaderboard. All right, so uh, back over here. So we have no indexes created on that bucket. Bucket. Uh, it's not even listed here, okay. And we're back to not enough permission. So let's just see. I'm typing up documentation, so chatting about code is my fix for the day. See, that's, I mean, that's a talent that I don't think I've ever had. Uh, listening to some, somebody else talk, or even listening to music while I'm doing work, I, I have never been good at that. Uh, let's see, could not bootstrap. Authentication failed for user hang fire test. Oh, uh, so that's just straight up failed. Uh, because I deleted the bucket, so we're going to give a read-only access here. So that's that's a good error message already. Exception of system type exception was thrown. Huh? It threw an exception, but it didn't give me a message. 
That's down here, right? I thought it would have a message for me. What's with you and the monkey smiley face? Is that the new default smiley face or something? Or you just like monkeys? It's okay if you like monkeys, Calvin. I'm going to try to monkey shame you. Alright, results. Results on message. That's the D without spaces. Oh, it's colon space. So this is what I usually do. And that doesn't, it shows up like a robot face. And there's no message. What? <laughs> what? Oh, it's not, it's not result dot message. It's result dot two string. Okay, there we go. I wonder if I have a custom setting somewhere. Mm, maybe. You're in uh, you're in monkey mode. All right, so that's the message I want to see. User does not have credentials to run the next operations, etc., etc., etc. Good. Okay. Now let's give it to a user that is properly configured. Run it. Should be no errors. And should start spitting out some stuff into our this log file after it runs the indexes. So we're going to go back over here again. Watch the indexes get built. Very exciting. There's one. Primary index. There's two. Uh, index on type field. So technically speaking, the primary index is enough for Hangfire to keep going. But um, depending on the scale, that would mean it would be very, very slow. So these additional indexes are necessary, not for functionality, but for perf proper performance. In fact, I kind of wish the primary index wasn't required for hang fire here, but um, uh, that's a whole different, a whole different kettle of fish. We'd have to go and figure out what queries are actually using that index and try to rewrite them somehow. All right, and there's index number five. And we should see message on the console app here. Press enter to stop, and there we go. Now let's see if we can find that log file. What do I call it? Right here. And I called the file testfile.log.txt. Okay, it doesn't exist yet. So I'm hoping this will exist after a minute. This is a tool I use called Everything. It just searches every file on my disks. It's not come with Windows. It's very handy. Interesting. What's interesting? Everything or something else? I do have it minutely, right? Yeah, every minute. Seems like it's it's not running. I started using Executor as a nice little launcher. I don't think I've heard of that one before. I, you know, I probably could have set a breakpoint in here. But it makes me nervous that it's not running the background task. So I'm just sort of looking through the, the data that Hangfire is creating here. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I don't I don't like it. One of these days I'm gonna get back on that couch based VS extension. Hey, if you're going to spend some uh, time working on something for Couchbase, man, I, I would much rather you take a look at the Entity Framework provider, which I'm supposed to be working on today, but we got hung up on this uh, Hangfire business that I thought wasn't going to take this long. Doesn't seem like these background tasks are running. Completely out of my wheelhouse on that one, too. Haha. -ha. Yeah, no kidding. I, look, dude. 
<laughs> I, I've, I've used any framework in my career, barely. Uh, actually writing uh, any framework provider, forget about it. Never done it. So we're, we're learning something. How, how often do we pair program on something that neither of us had any idea how to do and we, uh, and we figured it out? Greater than the sum of our parts. But uh, right now, uh, I can't get a darn background task to run. Okay, that's fair, lol. I'm not saying we always, get, we always got it to work the optimal way, but we always got it to work. All right, so this isn't this isn't running. Why isn't it running the background task? All right, let me try it with uh, debug mode on. So I'm running this again. So now I'm testing what happens when the indexes already exist. Yeah, and I'm still dealing with some of those suboptimal decisions. Oh no. Okay, so. Uh, ran it again. Uh, it looks like it took a little extra time to see if the indexes still exist. There's definitely something this could probably be improved, but maybe not, is that I'm listing indexes every time, and that's going to be a relatively, not super slow, but it's going to be additional traffic to go, hey, Couchbase, what are your indexes? Give me those indexes. Um, and then check all of them. Uh, you know, I'd much rather make that call only one time. But again, the nature of Couchbase, the nature of distributed programming, the nature of this program be running in lots of different places at the same time is that indexes could be added or removed here. Uh, it, you know, I don't want to introduce any sort of race conditions. So it's not ever going to be perfect, but I just want to have some better checks in place. And our breakpoint is not being hit. Why is that? Did I forget to do something with Hangfire? I feel like there's maybe something I forgot to do. Let me just uh, check my own personal code here. See if there's something else. I needed to do to check or to actually kick off uh, hang fire. I don't think there is. So this is yeah, hang fire. Services on hang had, had hang fire. Maybe that's it right there. Uh, this is this is something that's specific to ASP.NET. Is services dot hang fire, so maybe I'm just barking up the wrong tree with trying to run it in a plain console app. Um, let me just check the hang fire docs real quick. Getting started. Catch out in the queue. Oh, oh look at that. <laughs> uh, yep. That would be why it's not doing anything. I'm just putting jobs in, but I'm not actually... Oh boy, okay. Try this now. This might actually work now. I might actually print out the console too. And to the log file, which is fine. So once again, the index is already there. But it's not failing, it's not bombing out. Hopefully we won't have to wait very long. Come on, write something to console already. This is a hang fire thing, right? Yeah. Well, 
What is going on here? Using our server equals. I mean, look, that's pretty much what I'm doing. I'm not using SQL Server. I'm using a lot more defaults. But yeah, it's console.write line. So it should be working. Oh, there we go. Da -da -da -da. Hey, I'm in a background task. The time is 3.11. And there's my log file. There we go. Saying the same thing. Perfect. Stop. Hey, I said stop. Why aren't you stopping? Close you down. Okay. Good. So, let's go back over here and see if I'm ready to commit this. Hangfire.couchbase. I'm going to commit to my own little branch here. And all I changed was put those in the wrapper functions and I brought in system threading out tasks. Do I need that? System threading dot tasks? Nope. Don't need that. Um what was it there but oh what was there before? Nothing. Okay, weird. Alright, so uh put them in wrappers and all I did was add these extensions here. So created uh index wrappers um why did I create index wrappers? Because I wanted the exceptions to be printed out sooner, to fail faster, uh, to better indicate index creation failure. Still, it kind of bothers me that they're called create and check. Because it seems to me that's doing too much, but. I don't know. I think it's probably okay. All right, commit that to my branch. And then I will push this out to um, origin, I think. That's origin is mine, right? Yes. Push it out to origin. Same branch. Okie doke. It's a lot of work for like 10 lines of code. Uh, so over here in GitHub, I can go over to my repositories. Or I should see Hangfire, which is forked from MRAMs. And I've got, uh, this is my new branch, so I'm going to make a pull request uh, to MRAMs. And uh, so I created extension methods, extension, can't spell extension, oh my goodness, extension methods to wrap index creation and to throw exceptions, to throw an exception if the index is not created successfully. Um, <laughs> If you want to know more about the thought process, I live coded this today on Twitch, and I'll put a link to the video here later. I don't know, is that narcissistic to say that? Like, hey, check out my live stream. I don't want to be a jerk, but I mean, I did go through a lot of the thought process there in the, in the video. Um, so if he has questions, maybe he could look at that. Uh, or, or just, um, I don't, you know, I don't want to be a jerk, but, or just, uh, or if you have questions, I'm happy to answer them here. This guy, I mean, this guy's accepted PRs from me before. Um, uh, 
Um, so he's uh, he's definitely keeping on top of things. Um, I don't want him. To, I don't want to take up a lot of his time, but I also don't want to like just throw something over the wall and say, "Here you go." So I kind of want to be open to suggestions from his side as well. What's all this stuff here? I don't know what that is. Huh, okay, well I don't know. Uh, just create pull request. We'll see how this goes. Your local was behind his maybe, Old Fork? I, yeah, I didn't think so, but may, maybe. That's the develop branch. I don't know, I, I probably screwed it up. So anyway, he's got to check it out before anything happens. So if he wants me to re redo it, it's not that big of a deal to redo. All right, well, that's it for Hang Fire today. Close it on up. And uh, just I started at 1.30. Uh, I think I have about two hours scheduled for this. So we got 15 minutes left. Don't really have anything else. I don't want to get into any framework core here when I got 15 minutes left. So why don't we check out the old live coders team and see uh, who's streaming right now. Dev Chatter and the Michael Jolly. So I've rated Michael Jolly a couple times. I don't think I've ever rated Dev Chatter. Um, so I think we'll go ahead and rate him. Uh, so that's probably going to be the end of the, end of the stream today. Thank you very much very much for joining Calvin appreciate it um Cora also stopped by briefly Jack Jack Concept Rio also stopped in thank you very much I got some new followers uh, I got a new follower Calder Draconis he followed before I uh, started streaming today so thank you for the follow Calder Draconis I will be back again well actually no I won't be back again on Tuesday because I will be in New York City for QCon, so I will not be streaming live from that on Tuesday. I think I will be streaming next Thursday. It's like the one day I have left in town next week, so I should be able to stream uh, next Thursday. So that'll be uh, June, June 27th at 1.30 p.m. US Eastern U.S. time. So until then, we'll see you later. I'm going to go ahead and raid uh, Dev Chatter. And so everyone else, if you want to join me in the raid, go check out Dev Chatter. He looks like he's doing some, uh, looks like some C Sharp. I can't really tell for sure. But anyway, go check him out. And uh, that's it. Everyone else, have a good one.